It's back to the Super Speedway Saturday. Happy hour for the Winston Cup Series and the Aaron's 312 for the NASCAR Busch Series on TNT next Sunday. The Napa 500 on NBC. All that down the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Used to be the final race of the year. This time in October. Moved it up a month to try and get a little bit better weather. Dale Jr. is boxed in right now on two lap cars. That's Mike Wallace in the 14. First car one lap down trying to get back in front of leader Ricky Craven without success right now. Don't forget tomorrow the NASCAR Bush Series race at Memphis that's being run right now. TNT, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Set the VCR if you're going off to work and watch it tomorrow night. That's what I'll be doing. Okay, here comes Johnny Benson, the 10 car, closed in right on the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 8. Benson started 11th, running 3rd. Benson's got bigger problems than that. Right behind him is Rusty Wallace, trying to take a look. And he's looking. Can he get the grip on that bottom? No, not that time. By the way, we did find the debris. It was a little piece of metal that supports that front fender. Remember on Jeffrey Bodine's car, we saw the accident where that right front fender got ripped away. One of the support bars got knocked out of it in subsequent contact, and that was what the debris was that brought out the last caution. We're sitting down right up against the pit wall, heading into turn one. Burton got the black flag under that caution flag and had to go to pit road. Matt, what happened? Well, he pitted twice, Alan, to fix the right rear corner. The bumper cover was flapping in the wind. That's why NASCAR black flag. And on his first stop here, they made a track bar adjustment. The car just won't cut in the center. He says there's absolutely, positively, no grip up off turn two. No grip whatsoever. And we saw him just a few laps ago and he came off turn two and got the car a little bit loose and got up into the left front fender of Jeff Gordon's car. I think if the eight gets close enough, he'll probably lay the bumper to the 14. And, uh, why is that? Because well, the 14's left down and... Hold him up. Hold him up. Well, it doesn't look like he's holding up, though. The 14's getting around... Getting through the corners pretty good, but Earnhardt's probably thinking he's holding him up. This is for fourth place. Ricky Rudd in the 28. Rusty Wallace in the 2. And sixth place, Ward Burton, right behind them in the 22. Ward has led more laps than any other driver so far today. And I'll tell you what, Ricky Rudd in this 22 car might be the best car I've seen on the bottom of the racetrack, the line, the groove where these cars used to run. Ward Burton, we've seen his, how well his car is running. Uh, Ricky Craven's car is running on the bottom of the racetrack, but the 22 car, he runs up on top and gets around very well. And there's Big Orange right behind him. Championship leader Tony Stewart just joining us. Started 31st today. Made a powerful charge up through the field. Avoiding all of the cautions and bumps and spins that marred the first 200 laps of this race. Got himself up eventually to the lead. Shuffled back a little bit by some pit strategy. But the championship leader with a solid performance so far today. While we watch the green flag racing, let's throw our Craftsman truck update. At you, Mike Bliss with an 85-point lead on Rick Crawford. Three races to go for the trucks. The California Speedway, Phoenix, and Homestead. The three races remaining as Bliss tries to win a title. You know, Bliss is in a uh, tough spot right now. Yep, there he is in the 40 car. This week's sub for Sterling Marlin. Remember, Jamie McMurray, last week's race winner, had to be in Memphis today to fulfill his uh, Bush Series sponsor obligations, and so Bliss in the subs role here at Martinsville today. The camera that you just saw was on board Mark Martin as he tries to get by and does get by the 40 car of Mike Bliss. Second place, heating up. Johnny just couldn't get the power down up off two. Saw the back end of the car get kind of happy. Talk about a team that needs a good result. If it could go wrong for this 10 team this year, including injuries to the driver on two different occasions, it's happened. No, it's not one you'd want to put down in your 
to remember 2002. The Dale Earnhardt Jr. out there running around in second spot. During the last caution, while he was riding around, his spotter, Ty Norris, was kind of lamenting the fact that, you know, you bring a nice, clean race car here to the track, and it gets all torn up, and it's tight, and there's not a lot of room to race. And after he got through with his tirade, his name is Ty Norris, tirade, uh, here's what Jr. had to say in response. You're where I was yesterday. Tomorrow, I promise you, you'll find it amusing. Well, let's finish right where we are or leave the one spot better. We'll all love this place again. It's actually pretty fun, but I can you can kind of see where your day could really hit the bottom any second. You know what I mean? <laughs> they have some great conversations uh, on that A-team, don't they? Yeah, and that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty profound for Junior. I mean, tomorrow, I mean, I understand today you're upset, but tomorrow it'll just simply be amusing. All this going on for second place, 1.6 seconds behind the tide ride. Ricky Craven, they caught a little glimpse of Joe. Joe. Hideo Fukuyama, Suzuka City, Japan driver. Hey, he's doing a pretty decent job. You know, he is doing a good job. At the start of the race, I watched him, and he was all over the racetrack, but, you know, he's calmed down, and he's not doing a bad job here at Martinsville. And I don't think that Junior's upset with Mike Walls too bad anymore, because... I was going to say, Mike was running good. I... He was getting through the corner pretty good. Ricky Craven got his first NASCAR Winston Cup win this race one year ago. Can he make it back-to-back -back in the Old Dominion 500?